Welcome to the colourful world of food. We all want to be fit and healthy and we do this by eating foods rich in nutrients and staying active. So what are healthy foods? There is a rainbow of delicious and healthy food options to choose from. Let's look at the foods we should eat and how much to maintain a well-balanced diet. But with so many celebrity and fad diets, where do you turn for reliable dietary information? Nutrition Australia is a good start. They are a non-government, non-for-profit organisation promoting optimal health for all Australians by encouraging food variety and physical activity. They've released the latest Healthy Eating Pyramid, which provides us with easy to understand information on what makes up a healthy and balanced diet. The pyramid was first introduced in the 1980s, and while it's been updated several times since, it's always shared the same core messages about healthy eating. It uses a more to less guide as a simple way to show the types and proportions of foods the average Australian should eat in one day to maintain good health. The pyramid divides whole foods and minimally processed foods into five core food groups plus healthy fats as a basis of a balanced diet. It's based on the 2013 Australian Dietary Guidelines, which were developed by a team of nutrition experts based on thousands of pieces of scientific research. The guidelines summarise what and how we should aim to eat for good health and to reduce the risk of foods and nutrition related diseases. Nutrition Australia represents this advice in the pyramid. The pyramid is based on the recommended food intake for 19 to 50 year olds according to the Australian Dietary Guidelines. However, the proportions and placement of each food group are generally applicable to all age groups from 1 to 70 years. The following advice is for the average healthy person. People who are pregnant or breastfeeding, or who have a chronic health condition, food intolerance, or allergies should speak to their doctor or an accredited practicing dietitian for specific dietary advice. The foundation layers contain the three plant-based food groups, vegetables and legumes, fruits and grains. The first plant-based food group, vegetables and legumes, includes leafy green vegetables like lettuce and spinach, root vegetables like potato, and many others like cauliflower, broccoli, capsicum, mushrooms, pumpkin and eggplant. Legumes include kidney beans, chickpeas, lentils and soybeans. The second plant-based food group, fruits, includes apples, oranges, strawberries, peaches, bananas and grapes. And the third plant-based food group, grains, includes wheats, barley, brown rice, oats and buckwheat. These three food groups make up the largest part of the pyramid because plant foods should comprise the largest portion of our diet, around 70%. Eating a wide variety of foods is the best way to get the most health benefits from a wide variety of nutrients. Plant foods are not only packed with a huge variety of nutrients such as vitamins, minerals and antioxidants, they are also the main source of carbohydrates and fibre in our diet. Eating mostly plant foods can help protect against certain diseases such as type 2 diabetes, stroke, heart disease, high blood pressure and some cancers. It is also good to choose fruits and vegetables that are in season as they are often cheaper and tastier. And it's another great way to get variety throughout the year. We should aim to have at least two serves of fruit and five serves of vegetables or legumes each day. A serve of vegetables is about one cup of raw leafy salad vegetables, half a cup of cooked or chopped vegetables or legumes, half a medium potato or one medium tomato. A serve of fruit is equal to one medium fruit such as an apple, orange or banana, two small fruits like kiwi fruits or apricots, or a cup of diced fruit or berries. From the grains food group, the pyramid recommends eating mostly whole grains like oats, quinoa and brown rice. And wholemeal, whole grain or high cereal fibre varieties of foods like bread, crisp bread, breakfast cereals and pasta, rather than highly processed refined options. 
These can help with lowering blood cholesterol levels and reducing the risk of developing diseases including type 2 diabetes, heart disease and colon cancer. Why do we need to eat whole grain and wholemeal foods? Because they retain most of the fibre, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and phytochemicals from the original grains. Teenagers should aim to have around five to seven serves of grain foods a day. A serve of grain food is one slice of bread, half a cup of cooked rice, pasta, noodles or cooked porridge, two thirds of a cup of whole grain breakfast cereal, a quarter cup of muesli or three crisp breads. What about the foods in the middle layer? The middle layer has two food groups. There's the milk, yogurt, cheese and alternatives group and the lean meat, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds and legumes group. Milk, yogurt, cheese and alternatives are our main source of calcium, which is important for good bone health, as well as protein, carbohydrates and many other important vitamins and minerals. The alternatives includes non-dairy options such as soy, rice or nut milks with at least 100 milligrams of added calcium per 100 millilitres. A lack of calcium in our diet can lead to disorders like osteoporosis, where bones lose strength and break more easily. The teenage years are very important for building strong, healthy bones for your adult life, which is why teenagers should aim to have three and a half serves of milk, yogurt or cheese a day. Just make sure you choose mostly reduced fat options to limit extra kilojoules from saturated fats. A standard serve of milk, yogurt, cheese and alternatives is one cup of milk, two slices or 40 grams of hard cheese, cheddar for example, 200 grams of yogurt or one cup of soy, rice or other cereal milk with at least 100 milligrams of added calcium per 100 millilitres. Lean meat, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds and legumes are our main sources of protein. We need protein to help with the healthy growth of body tissue in our muscles, internal organs and skin and to repair damaged tissue. Protein is also a source of energy. Many animal foods also contain vitamin B12 that helps with brain and nervous system function. And they are also a major source of iron, particularly the type of iron that our body can more easily absorb than the type of iron found in plant foods. Fish is also an excellent source of omega-3 fats, which helps keep our brain tissue and retina healthy, as well as our hearts. Nuts have a range of different nutrients, as well as healthy monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Why are legumes included in two of the food groups? Legumes are classified as both a vegetable and a protein food. They not only provide vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates and fibre like vegetables, they are also a source of protein like the other foods in lean meats, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts and seeds group. Right, so that's why legumes and beans are an essential part of a vegetarian or vegan diet because they provide essential protein from non-animal foods. People who don't eat meat, poultry and fish can definitely get protein from legumes and other foods in this food group. But it's recommended that people who follow a vegan or vegetarian diet speak to an accredited practicing dietitian to make sure they're eating a balanced diet that still provides all the nutrients we need. We should aim to have two and a half thirds of these protein foods each day and to mix it up between meat and non-meat options. A standard serve for this food group is 65 grams of cooked lean red meats, including beef, lamb, pork or kangaroo, 80 grams of cooked lean poultry, like chicken or turkey, 100 grams of cooked fish fillet, two large eggs, one cup of legumes such as lentils or chickpeas, and 30 grams of nuts and seeds. At the top of the pyramid are the healthy fats. 
We need small amounts of healthy fats every day to support heart health and brain function. There are good and bad fats. Unhealthy fats are the saturated and trans fats that mostly come from animal products, some plants like coconut oil and palm oils, and many processed foods. Healthy fats are the unrefined polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats that come from mostly plant sources, extra virgin olive oil, nut and seed oils for example. Healthy unsaturated fats are found in other foods in the pyramid, like fish, avocado, nuts and seeds. So we only need a small amount from oils and spreads each day as part of a balanced diet. By increasing your intake of unsaturated fats and reducing saturated fats and avoiding trans fats altogether, you can lower your risk of heart disease. And so that's why healthy fats are at the top of the pyramid, a diet low in saturated and trans fats, but with moderate amounts of unsaturated fats helps keep you healthy. Drinking water is the best way to stay hydrated. It also supports other essential functions in the human body. Water should be your main drink of choice. Avoid sugary drinks like soft drinks, sport drinks and energy drinks. These are classified as discretionary items and they should only be consumed sometimes and in small amounts. Adding herbs and spices to food is a great way to create delicious flavours and beautiful aromas. Herbs and spices are beneficial to our health, but because we consume small amounts, their main function is colour, flavour and aroma to meals. By using fresh, dried or ground herbs and spices to make tasty homemade meals, we can reduce the amount of salt added during cooking or eating. Sodium, which is found in salt, naturally occurs in some foods. Our bodies require small amounts of sodium for good health, but we tend to get more than enough from foods anyway. And fruits, vegetables, legumes and unsweetened dairy foods contain small amounts of naturally occurring sugars which aren't bad for us. The problem is that many processed and packaged foods and drinks have high amounts of added salt or sugar in the ingredients. On average, we already consume too much salt and added sugar, which can lead to an increased risk of diseases such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes and some cancers. By making our own meals and choosing whole foods or minimally processed foods, we can limit the amount of salt and added sugar we consume. Consuming added sugars, especially from foods like chocolate, sweets, biscuits, cakes, desserts and soft drinks adds extra kilojoules to your diet. This can lead to weight gain as well as poor health. Excessive amounts of sugar can also lead to dental cavities. Choose fresh or minimally processed varieties of foods and check the product label to see if salt and sugar has been added. Now I'm ready to eat well. The essential themes to remember are... Enjoy a variety of foods from the five food groups. Choose mostly plant-based foods. Limit saturated fats and added sugar and salt. And choose water as your main drink.